October 11th, as we talk, it's less than 30 days till the opening game of the men's basketball season. So a great time to check back in with UNH head coach Bill Harry. And coach, time to hold court once again. How are you? Yeah, doing well, Mike. Uh, and it's great to see everybody on the screen. It's, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I don't, I don't, without, say, without, you know, the last two years, what we've been through, it's just good to see people uh, and faces on the screen. And um, we're doing well. Like you said, we're, we're, we're actually exactly 29, away, 29 days away from our opening game on, on Tuesday, November 9th. Uh, you know, we had a five-week summer session back in uh, mid-June to mid-July that went well. The kids went home for about a month, and then we started classes, I want to say, August 30th. Uh, we had about a four-week pre quote-unquote preseason with the NCAA hours, and then we started official practice where the hours get extended on September 28th. Um, today was our 11th official practice. Tomorrow will be 12. So we're off to a good start. I'm very pleased with uh, with where we're at right now, but it's still really early in the year. So here's the, here's the fun question right out of the bat. October of 2021 versus October of 2020, you had the team, you were getting ready for a season a year ago, but is there a lot more of being solely focused on the basketball versus all the other COVID stuff? It's still around, but not at the same level as it yeah. was a year ago. No, 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 no. It is still around, but no, you know, not even close. I think, I think you'll all be happy to hear that, number one, our entire basketball team is vaccinated. Our entire coaching staff is vaccinated. Our managers are vaccinated and our, all, all the support groups. So uh, give, give our players a lot of credit uh, for getting that done. And hopefully that's going to keep everybody, each other safe and healthy, and we can move on and hopefully play a full season. Um, yeah, much different this year than a year ago. I mean, last year at this time, I don't think we really started kind of technically official practice uh, until like the first week, maybe of October last, or the second week of October. We're all, Our first game last year, remember, if you recall, was the day before Thanksgiving against Keene State at home. You know, we're, 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 we're opening on November 9th. We're 29 days away. We're so much further along with this basketball team as far as just basketball as we were a year ago at this time. Um, and uh, so I think we're off to a good start, and I think we're all excited. And I know there's a chance for folks to come see the team even before that November 9th game. Big football game coming up Saturday with UNH and Dartmouth at 1 o'clock, but – I think the invitation's out there. Come on in Lundholm, Jim, when the basketball game's over and you'll get a real good look at the Wildcat basketball team. Yeah, I think so, Murph. You know, uh, we've already had referees into our gym twice. We had them in a week ago this past Saturday, and we just kind of went up and down the floor in a, in a scrimmage situation. Uh, and then we had uh, referees back in this past Saturday, two days ago. And, you know, both, both kind of mini scrimmages went well. I think it's really important that, we get the players with the uniforms on. We get them in the gym with the gym set up as if it's a game night. And I'm just hoping, I hope if anybody comes in, I, I, these kids have been working so hard, you know, behind closed doors with not a lot of eyes on them. Obviously last year we played an entire season, 19 games with no fans. I think these guys are just dying to just get to play in front of anybody and just get that excitement and that enthusiasm back. So like Murph just said, this coming Saturday, our UNH football team will play Dartmouth at one o'clock Saturday afternoon. We cannot start the blue white game until the game, the football game is over. So we will start and tip off at about four 30 right after the uh, football game's over. And we'd love to have you, you know, you're still tailgating, you're leaving the, uh, the stadium, just pop in, you know, you don't have to stay for the whole game, but just, you know, stop being safe, Bo, and just, you know, get an opportunity to look at our guys. It's a real short walk from the Bud Light beer deck into Lundholm Gym. Uh, for those who haven't been to football this season, the beer deck is right outside Lundholm. So, Coach, make sure you don't accidentally pop a door open there in the middle. Yeah, but, well, that's why we got to go at 430, man. That's We couldn't go, like, any, any earlier. We had, to, we had to wait till it was over. For the fans, it's a chance to see the guys. For the guys, it's a chance to be seen in front of the fans. But for the coaching staff, what do you hope to get out of a blue-white scrimmage? 
Well, you know, it, it, it's the, the one thing is, and we got some, you know, former players, uh, you know, UNH players on, on the, uh, on the zoom call. And I think you guys remember how long preseasons were and how much practice before you played a game, you know, we've been kind of banging on each other here pretty hard, uh, you know, for a while now. And I think what you want, we've got certain checkpoints, like anytime that we bring officials into the gym and we have a kind of a structured up and down five on five situation, we call those checkpoints. And I think they're checkpoints. Yes. Number one, for us to evaluate, you know, where our team is at, at this particular point of our preseason, where are we at offensively? Where are we, where are we at defensively? And then obviously we're evaluating every individual player. I, I, I will say this. I, I think, with this basketball team, you know, we might be as deep as we've ever been as since I've, since we've been here, my staff, um, you know, we're going to have some really, really hard decisions in a few weeks when we start playing games as far as, you know, even a starting lineup. And then what is, what are our rotations off the bench? Um, so, you know, I, I, yeah, we're seeing, you know, how we play, where are we offensively up to this point? Where are we defensively at this point? Do the players comprehend and understand the things we're trying to get done? And, uh, you know, and then what we have is we have, after we have the uh, blue white game this week, then it's, we, we're into two closed scrimmages the following Sunday. And then the following Sunday, one is on the road and one is at home uh, on Sunday, but those are not open to the public. Yeah. So make sure you'll come this Saturday. Don't come to those closed scrimmages. Why, why is that coach? Why do we have those? NCAA rules. Maybe you don't know the answer why no one can come see closed scrimmages. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why, but I will say this, Murph, since they instituted the, you know, us to, to be able to do that, I can't remember how long ago. I think we've been probably doing this maybe five, six, seven years. I really like it. You know, it's, uh, you know, you can, you can structure the scrimmage any way you want. Uh, we will play a 40 minute game. You know, we're going up to Maine on the first Sunday and then we have Siena, who we had a close scrimmage with two years ago and was supposed to return last year, but we had to call it off with the COVID. Um, so two good teams and two division one teams. Um, and I think it just gives you, you, you a great opportunity to see how you look against other people. Um, you know, we'll play situations, time and score. We'll set up, you know, you know, you're up or down a minute and a half left in the game. You'll play it out. We can do a lot of different things and work on a lot of different things. So I think it's a really positive thing. Getting back to this Saturday, though, how do you approach the day? Is it you coaching one team? Are you watching and letting Ryan Harrion coach against Jordan Bronner? What's happening out there? Yeah, what we'll probably do is we'll probably come in like earlier in the day, maybe like, you know, mid-morning. And we'll, we'll probably get like a shooting session in for about 45 minutes just to get the guys out of bed, get them moving, get the blood flowing and just get some shots up and then we'll just kind of, you know, do their thing. And then we'll come back up to the gym and, and just get ready, uh, you know, to play. It, it'll be, it'll be, we'll probably play four 10 minute quarters and try to get a, a full 40 minute game in Chris Moore, who's been with me, my right-hand guy for now going on 17 years, we'll take one team and then Ryan and Jordan Bronner uh, will take the other team. And I allow them to coach, you know, we have obviously, you know, things in, offensively that we want to see executed and uh but we also you know it, it, I, I I really like this group I I really do um I think we have all the ingredients with this basketball team to really make a run this year I, I we, we have experience we have veteran players we have older guys now the seniors are if you remember three years ago when they were freshmen and sophomores and we had to turn the whole roster over. We won five basketball games and we didn't even qualify for the conference tournament three years ago. Then with that group back as sophomores and juniors, we made a jump to 15 wins. And then this past year in a shortened season with the COVID, we were 10 and nine and we were the three seed and hosted a home game in the first round of the tournament, the conference tournament. I don't know if that team was ready at that particular point last year when Lowell came in and beat us. Uh, in the in, in the uh, conference tournament game, so I, I I think it's you know I really think it's our time, I, and I've said that before, but I you know we have you, you kind of have 
bits and pieces of what you need, I think, to be successful. We have a first-team all-conference player returning, Jade Martinez. We have a second-team all-conference player slash first-team, Nick Guadarrama. We have the Rookie of the Year coming back, Nick Johnson. We have uh, another all-rookie player, our point guard, Blondu Chichengu. Um, we have uh, Josh Hopkins coming off an injury who only played four basketball games last year. Taylor Matos has been really, really impressive in our preseason. Uh, very impressed with how he's playing. Uh, more of an impact, uh, great effort. Uh, Chris Lester is now back for a sixth year. He's a really experienced player. Quan Murphy is a veteran experienced player. Uh, KJ McClurg's a year older. John Wilman's a year older. And I, I like our newcomers, uh, Sloan Seymour, uh, who spent his freshman year at Siena up in Albany in the MAC, then transferred to GW down in DC. Um, he can really shoot the basketball at 6'8, 6'9. He, he made 98 threes his freshman year at Siena and set a, a school record for freshmen uh, for, you know, with made threes. Uh, Marco Foster's out of, out of the Texas area. Uh, went to Oklahoma Christian University, a Division II school last year, led Division II in three-point field goals made last year in a shortened season. And A.J. Lopez is a young man out of, out of, out of Queens, New York, um, who's a very, very talented uh, 6'5 wing player. Uh, we've, got, we've got pieces. We really do. I, I, I like this team a lot. And fans are invited to use the chat function to type in some questions. So we invite you to do those. We have one now. Um, from Andrew, will the starting lineup depend on the opponent or is your goal to hopefully have a set starting lineup for all games once we get going for real? Yeah, good, uh, good question, Andrew. You know, what I've, what I've always done throughout my career is, you know, and I don't know, it's uh, uh, it, we, we mix our we basically mix our teams every week of practice. Um, I just think you I, we, it's so important, I think, that you keep the competition at a high level and I think you keep everybody in the mix and everybody involved. I've been to other practices throughout my career where you'll go to practice. And I guess there's two ways to look at this. And, you know, teams will have their top five, six, seven players, let's say on the blue team, and then the rest on the white team. And, you know, your top six, seven, eight guys will just maybe beat the, uh, the other group. Just, I don't know. I, I want practices top to bottom as competitive as possible. We haven't even thought about a starting lineup yet. Uh, this Saturday in the blue-white game, we have the teams mixed up again, the groups mixed up again. And then after we get done with this Saturday, then we'll get together. And when we head up for our first closed scrimmage, you know, obviously you won't see it. You won't really read about it as fans, but we'll probably go more with, okay, we think at this point uh, this might be our, our starting five. I will be honest with you as a coach, starting lineups don't really mean a lot to me. They might mean a lot to the player as far as hearing their name and going out for the jump ball. Uh, we're going to, we'll sub as quickly as we need to. Uh, um, I think, but I think what we have is we've got, you know, very, very, very tough competition uh, for playing time. And it's, it's been very evident in practice. Our practices have been really, really competitive up to this point. All right, thank you. Probably means even more pressure. I shouldn't say pressure, but the difficulty for the new players that you touched on to get into a role, right? Because this is as experienced a team as they'll ever bring back with talent. So it's going to take a lot, I would think, without being too forward. It would take a lot to suddenly supplant someone if you're brand new to the program. Yeah, yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. We haven't won a championship yet. We, we haven't reached our goals yet. And we're going to put the players out on the floor that we think are going to give us the, us the best possible chance every night we step on the floor to be successful. But like I said earlier, you know, it's, uh, you know, we, 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 we do have a lot of veteran, older, experienced players that have played a lot of college basketball games under their belt. And I just feel like the natural progression for any of you that have ever played college basketball is as you get older each year. Now, now what's got to happen is, you know, every you know, players have to continue to make jumps in their games. They have to continue to improve. 
And I see that, you know, I, I feel like with, with this group of guys, because they're older, you know, I, I, I think we can coach them and challenge them harder. I think they can take it because I think the, well, I, I, I don't know, I don't think it's a, a real talent. I, I really truly believe we have good enough players to compete for this. I think all of you as former players know it, but it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not just the talent. It's your competitiveness. It's how hard you play. It's your toughness. It's your physicality. It's your will. It's your desire. Those are the things I think that are almost more important to win championships. Then you add that with the other ingredients you have, and then you can have a good basketball team. So that's kind of like what we're trying to develop here. Here's a question I love. It's oh, not that all the questions I love, but this one I've been curious about. Last year, the year without fans across the country, coaches tended to dress casually. Now love they're it. dressed back. Are you, are you back to the, the suits and the, the, the sport coats? Who asked that question? That was an anonymous person. Person did okay, not want okay, to be okay, uh, identified. Okay. No, no, I say that because I love the question. It, you know, it's really funny. We brought that up as a staff about two weeks ago in the office. And I don't know if the conference is going to mandate to us a dress code. I haven't heard yet. I would like to keep it casual. I, I mean, I'm, I don't think a polo shirt and just and slacks. I think that's fine. Personally, I would like to see that stay in. So I don't know, Murph, yet if they're going to mandate a dress code. Um, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, that was that was comfortable last year. I liked it. Have you have you called your friends like Jim Beheim to see what he's doing or how do you? Yeah, no, no, no. I haven't called anybody. Yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, good question, though. And by the way, speaking of uh, good looks, I think the new whole you and I have talked about this briefly. The new home uniforms. It's a small thing, but it's been a long time since the uniform said Wildcats at home, and I like it. Yeah, yeah, we really like them. We bought brand new uh, uh, road uniforms last year. I think all you guys, as former players, you know the deal here. We play more road games than we do home games. So those blue uniforms get worn out quicker than the home uniforms. So we replaced the road uniforms last year, the blues, and it was time to get new white uh, home uniforms, whites. I think you're going to really like them when you see them. They're really sharp. Um, and, yeah, we got the Wildcats on the front, and uh, I think it's good. And then the road, I think, you know, obviously, I hope you know who we are at home. I hope, okay, but when we go on the road, it'll say UNH. So they definitely know who we are. Well, it's a it's a salute to your favorite baseball team that's playing tonight. The Red Sox wear Red Sox at home, Boston on the road. UNH will be the same way, but I don't want to get too much into the baseball. But since you're locked in tonight, coach, less than an hour, is this the night the Red Sox punch their ticket to the ALCS? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I feel it. I feel it. It's going to be you know, Eduardo Rodriguez is getting the start, man. He's, he's, he's got to get a little deeper, though, than the starting pitching. Because, I mean, those bullpens are getting worn out, both teams. Good answer. Back to depth with your team. Question came in from Justin. With Hopkins returning from injury, Seymour and Foster transferring in, has shooting become a potential strength of this team? Well, I, I think we've had this discussion for many, 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 many years. Um, you know, uh, I can – I really feel that this could be our – one of our better perimeter shooting teams that we've had with multiple players. It's not like one or two or three guys. We've talked about this in previous Zooms. I think when you look at our team and the way that we're kind of built offensively the last couple of years, we've almost kind of done this thing in reverse on offense. And what I mean by that is when you look at our better three-point shooters <laughs> – you know, Jaden Martinez led the America East in three-point field goal percentage last year as a four-man. Nick Guadarrama is a career close to 40% three-point shooter. Chris Lester did not shoot the three great percentage-wise last year, but the previous year he made threes. I think one of the biggest keys for our basketball team, but, but, but what we are, I think we have five front court players with, with Jaden Nick Guadarrama, Chris Lester, Sloan Seymour, and Taylor Matos. Knock on wood, they're all healthy right now. And you're talking, Jaden Martinez, a fourth-year senior. 
Nick Guadarrama, a fourth year senior, Sloan Seymour, a fourth year transfer, Chris Lester, a sixth year grad student, Taylor Matos, a fourth year senior. And that's my point. We have older, experienced veteran guys on this basketball team. We've got size. We're going to continue to throw it around the basket. But I think where we get a lot of our threes with our basketball team is a lot of inside out action. And I'll say this again, that, you know, Nick Guadarrama to me, we're playing Nick really a lot at the, strictly at the four right now. I know we played him at the five a lot last year with Jaden at the four. And we feel like we, it, for, I think for us to take the next step as a team, we have to get bigger in the front court. We have to. We have to find a way with Taylor Matos at the five to be involved. We've been playing Jaden Martinez at some three uh, and just trying to get a bigger lineup out there. And you know, Sloan Seymour can really, really shoot the three. Chris Lester's an experienced player. So, yes, the three, you know, Marco Foster led Division Two in, I think, three-point field goal percentage last year. Josh Hopkins has made the most threes in, it, in, our, in his career on our team right now. So he's an experienced perimeter shooter. Um, yeah, I think we got some real depth uh, shooting the basketball. Well, you have some veterans, but you also have some diaper dandies. That leads to uh, Greg's question, which is, any coaching philosophy changes this year after becoming a grandfather? <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's a great question, Greg. You know, I thought maybe at some point I'd calm down, okay, and I'd be like the laid back grandfather. But, you know, I think when you, I think you, you know me as well as anybody, you, you saw her for six years. And for some reason, when I walk through those blue doors and I walk into that gymnasium, you know, you become kind of a different guy, you know what I mean? And uh, no, but really, really, really proud of Ryan and his wife, Jade, and uh, their daughter, Riley. It's, it's been a great experience, man. It really has. Um, yeah. So, but, but, you know, business is business and you know me, I'll be focused. I'll be focused on what we got to do. I didn't know if you and Sean McDonald might exchange tips on how to change diapers and burp a baby at this point. Yeah, maybe we'll have a contest when uh, when 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 uh, Timmy brings his baby back from Colorado to visit. We'll bring Riley up and we'll have a contest of, of diaper changing. All right. See, these are the things you find out when Harry and holds court. Uh, Andrew has another question. This one might be for me as much as you. It, it mentioned during the last Zoom that Quan Murphy was going to be making behind the scenes video series of the Wildcats. Is that still going to happen? So I'll start with you, Coach, because I think the answer is yes. And I've heard and seen things, but. As we pointed out many times, Quan knows it starts with Coach Harry, and if everything uh, that he gets on film and is is only out if it's good publicity, he still has that yeah. trust. Yeah, no, Quan came to me back. I want to say when school started, and he and he's really into like the communications and the video and and the filming uh, aspect. And he said, "Hey, listen, you know, do you think we can do like a a, a season?" I'm not saying hard knocks. I, I don't want it to be a hard knocks thing, but something like that where they're going to videotape uh, our season. And um, we started it in the preseason. We have great footage from our four weeks of preseason uh, in the weight room on the court. Uh, players just in a day in the life of a player on campus. Uh, we actually took our team over to where I work out at Seacoast Kettlebell over in Dover. And uh, we had four consecutive Fridays. We took, we, uh, we did boxing and it was a terrific workout. We have video of that. So yeah, I think we're, we're definitely going to stay with it. I don't know if much content has been out lately. I think we've been kind of focused on, you know, practice getting ready and in the gym, but yeah, Murph, for sure. I think it's really positive. We want to keep that going. And I do know Quan reached out to me right before the basketball media day to make sure it was okay. If he got behind the scenes footage, of course we said, yes as teammates tend to be more animated when it's uh, one of their own buddies with the camera, as opposed to somebody from Wildcat Productions. But I think we'll unroll that stuff as we get closer to the start of the season. Yeah. Today, another yeah. benchmark day, as tickets went on sale for each of the individual games. We hope everyone gets season tickets at unhwildcats.com. But now the full schedule is there. You can buy tickets for any game. So we encourage that. And I don't know if we have to go game by game on the schedule, Coach, but it starts off against St. Joseph's, Phil Martelli and company coming in? or a, a, <laughs> What do we know about St. Joseph's? I, I have to admit, I don't know, don't know too much about the Monks. 
Well, that's when the schedule first came out. It said home against St. Joseph's. It did not say what state they were from. So I think everybody initially thought it was Philly. Okay, but I don't think there's any way they would have come here. We're going to open the season on Tuesday, November 9th against St. Joseph, Maine, a non-one. Um, and then, you know, we get – and, and, and you know how I am. We, we, every game is a hard game. It, it, it really is. And you respect everybody you play. You prepare the same way for everybody you play. You never take anything for granted at all. I'd love to see everybody. I, and you're going to say, well, it's a division three team, but you know, just why don't you come out and just support the guys in the first game and you know, it'd be great to see everybody. I know you haven't been in the gym in a couple of years and then we kind of get thrown into the fire. You know, it's uh you know, after we play St. Joe's in Maine, you know, then I, I think our, our, our November, December non-conference schedule is very challenging. I do. Uh, we go to Marquette, our second game of the year on Friday, I think November, I want to say maybe 12th. Um, we played out at Marquette in the Bradley Center, I want to say about five, six, seven years ago when Jordan Bronner was my point guard. Jordan's now on my staff. Um, uh, they play now in that brand new arena where the Milwaukee Bucks just won the uh, NBA championship uh, last year. Shaka Smart, who we played against when he coached at VCU a few years back uh, when he had the havoc going at VCU, then went to Texas, is now the new coach at Marquette. So I think anytime you bring in a new coach, a coach of that caliber, a, a coach with his style and energy of how hard they play, especially defensively, that's going to be. But you know what? I, 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 and then, and then we come home and then the following Thursday, we go down to Providence. So we have two back-to-back -back big East teams. It's two games on Fox sports. I don't know if it's one or two yet, but it's national TV. It's a great opportunity for our players. I look at it like if we're going to be who we think we can be in our conference and hopefully have a chance to compete for a championship in March, I think these games are great opportunities for us. They really are. Because I always say, if you're ever going to cut the nets down and we're ever going to go to the NCAA tournament, you're going to play a team out of the Big East, the ACC, the Big Ten, the SEC. You're going to play an upper level basketball team. You know, uh, then after we play, uh, then we come home, we play Quinnipiac at home. Um, they had a couple transfers leave two years ago into the portal and go to other schools and transfer back to Quinnipiac. Uh, then we're at Holy Cross on the Saturday right after Thanksgiving. I think we all know as New Englanders, uh, any, any New England rivalry at our level are great, great games. Um, and then I think we're home against Central Connecticut and we're at Bryant. Like those are our first seven games. So very competitive, uh, very challenging for sure. And I wanna to touch on the theme that you just said, New England schools. As you read through those teams, you Quinnipiac, Bryant, Central Connecticut, Holy Cross, there's a lot to be said, right, in your, in your non-conference schedule about playing against other teams in this region. Your alums remember playing against these teams. Fans can get to these games. It, it's a good non-conference schedule. It, it really is. You, you know, as a New Englander, and I think a lot of you former players, whether it was uh, the back, Greg, maybe the North Atlantic Conference when you or the ECAC, North or South. Then it went to the North Atlantic Conference. Then it went to America East. I don't know if we have anybody on from years back when it was the Yankee Conference, when it was UConn, UMass, it was URI. I mean, that was twice a year. Um, so yeah, I, I've got unbelievable respect for New England college basketball. We, 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 we will obviously play Dartmouth, our in-state rival. Uh, it's at Dartmouth this year after Christmas, between Christmas, New Year's. Uh, for some of you people that are a little down south, we are at VCU on December 21st. Uh, we play at VCU and we are going to Duquesne out in Pittsburgh, I think earlier in December. So, yeah, it, it, trust me, I don't think people really, really understand and, and, and appreciate how difficult, let alone... <laughs> the quote unquote money guarantee games, you know, those are obviously very, very hard games, but we've won some guarantee games here through the years and, you know, we're going to play, but when you play the central Connecticut's and the Bryant's and the Quinnipiac's and Holy Cross and 
Dartmouth teams, I guess, if you want to say at the same level, you guys all remember those teams. You all do. These are really, really hard games. They're hard, hard games. So that's why we're going through what we're going through now in practice, trying to prepare this team to get ready, you know, for what we're up against, you know, in November, December. No one can really forecast how things will go in the non-conference portion of the schedule and getting ready to turn the calendar. But I would think at least from the perspective of, okay, get the guys home a little bit around the holidays. Then they come back and it's not a terrible travel that you have Dartmouth on the road on December 29th. And then you open up the conference at home on January 2nd. So you can get resituated right after Christmas. Again, I'll go back to all the former players that are on the screen right here. You remember the hop that that's the one thing I think with, with art, with that college basketball, it's, you guys know the length of the season, you get no Thanksgiving. <laughs> you might get a couple of days at Christmas. Um, I remember many years I spent Christmas uh, when I was an assistant at Boston university way back with Mike Jarvis in Hawaii. I mean, not even, and my wife wasn't even with me. She was home with, with the babies. I mean, it's like, you know, you don't get a lot of time. I, I'm a real advocate. I know in division two basketball, it's an NCAA rule that they have to, they have a mandatory seven days off at the Christmas holidays. A man can't do anything, can't practice, can't be in the gym. Um, I think with obviously division one college basketball, it's more probably the higher level uh, power five teams want to play those home games, ticket sales, re, uh, g- generate revenue. You with me? Um, I would love to see us have more time off, especially around the Christmas holiday. We'll play at VCU on the 21st. We'll let the players go right after that game to whatever guys are traveling uh, across the country. We'll probably come back on the 26th and then we'll play on the, on the 29th or 30th up at Dartmouth. And as we all know, you know, when you play at our level of basketball, it really comes down to the conference. That, 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 that's your meal ticket. You know, we're, we're not going to get an at-large bid. No team in the history of our league has received an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. So, yeah, we have UMBC, I think, Murph, at home. I want to say January 2nd, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, is it back-to-back home games to start in the league? Uh, it is not. you got Sunday the 2nd against UMBC at 1 o'clock, and then an easy one, uh, Thursday night at Vermont uh, yeah. on January the 6th. So. Yep. Yep. Home yeah, again, all that following Saturday. So you're right in the yeah, fire right away. Yeah. But, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, you, you want you want to have a good record in November and December coming out of non-conference play. You want to win games early in the season so your players develop confidence and they feel good. We're going to have a challenge. This, this is going to be very, very hard. It's going to be difficult. Um, but. You have to make sure that when you get into January, February, March, that's really where it's at. We don't really sell that early in the year on our guys because we're trying to win every game we play. But at the end of the day, that's where, you know, that's where kind of your bread's buttered. And it's fun to get ahead of ourselves a little bit, but we'll peel it back. We'll have more of these between now and then, certainly. But I have a question from Damien, which I like. He said, who should we reach out to? to get tickets for road games and the non-conference schedule and yeah. this a group of UNH fans or group we can connect with at the non-conference games. Hey, hey Damien, if you don't mind me asking you, where, where are you living now? I'm in Minneapolis. So I want to go to the Marquette game. Good. Okay. What I want you to do is as we get closer, Damien, can you please email me directly? Okay. And uh, we will have tickets uh, waiting for you. Uh, you oh. want to bring any friends, any family? Feel free to do that. I will do that. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, as many people as we, I, I know there'll probably be 17,000 Marquette fans, but anybody we can get behind the bench with UNH, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we need, we're going to need all the help we can get. I like the other part of Damien's question too, Coach, which is trying to connect with other fans so that you're not alone behind the bench there because it, it's great to see uh, when there is a contingent of Wildcat fans yeah. together at any road game. Yeah, normally when we go on these road games, Murph, especially I think in the bigger arenas, you guys have all played in your careers in the big arenas. Normally the opposing team will put your group together. And I want to say it's normally behind your bench. 
24 hours of extra time to help you avoid All right. Uh, next question was, you mentioned a possible tip-off celebration taking the place of a golf tournament this year. Is that still going to happen? That's a good question, Murph. Uh, you know, uh, I can't answer that right definitively tonight. I think it's something that we're still discussing. I think what happens is, you know, you get into practice and you get so focused on your team and your day to day, what you're doing in the gym. And I don't, please don't take this the wrong way, but a lot of other things sometimes take a little bit of a backseat because you're just trying to get, you know, to the starting line. So I think that's something that we're going to have to still discuss and, and, and we'll talk about that. Uh, we still have time. You know, we don't know. We open 29 days. Um, so it's a discussion that we can have. I can have with Jack Burns and some of our people that, you know, we, we, we work with uh, in regards to, you know, things we do within the program. Why is it so important to still do these Zooms? I know in person is where we want to go, but it just for using Damien as an example, he's in Minnesota. Boom. He's here with you tonight. And no, it's great. These are opportunities to see. I, I see Braden's here from South Florida and, other guys from all over the place. It's really neat to see. No, it's, it's terrific. It really is. You know, you, you'd love to do things, you know, in person for sure. And just so everybody, like when we kind of postponed the uh, golf tournament this fall, I, I, a lot of it was really, you know, kind of safety related of bringing large groups together. Um, that was a, a big factor in why we didn't have it. Uh, we actually, they changed the date on us because the links were so backed up with weddings that got canceled last year with the COVID. We had to go to a Monday. The Friday was a prime day. For, and, you know, you guys at golf, you know, you don't get Fridays. We've always had that Friday. So you can make a weekend out of it. The Mondays, you know, when we, Jack and I talked, our, our staff talked, we felt the Monday was a tough day, especially for people that maybe had to travel from distance and work and things of that nature. So, uh, but yeah, I think anything, if we can get back to live, I mean, anything that, that trust me, I'm all for that. It's uh, for sure. And I know we touched on it last time, but there's some people on the call who weren't here last time, as we discussed earlier with the casual address and would you change? How about the schedule? Are you, how relieved are you, if at all, that it's not Saturday, Sunday, same opponent, same venue, it's more of the pacing that you've been used to in your career, Wednesday game, a Sunday yep. game, so on and so forth. Well, there was some early talk, I think, back in the summer that we were going to go to travel partners. You guys remember, I think, back in the day, I know back when I was at Drexel years ago, we had the travel partners. So, Jim Janot, you remember very well. I do. Coming down to Philly, down to Delaware. It was us and Delaware, and we'd come up and play Maine and New Hampshire. We'd come up and play Vermont and Hartford. Uh, um, we'd come up and play BU in Northeastern, which was an easy trip. You just stayed in one place in Boston. Uh, they were looking at the travel partners, and it would have been us in Maine again as partners this year. And for whatever reason, they, 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 they didn't go with that. So I, I kind of like, I think, where I like the schedule where it's at right now. I like a little bit of space. I liked a little bit of time to game prep. Um, so I think we're okay with that. Coach, we have a few minutes left. I'm going to open it up for everybody to jump in. But before we sign off the recorded part of this, just final thoughts here as we're under a month to go before the start of the season. You have these closed door scrimmages coming up. The blue white scrimmage, a reminder, this coming Saturday, right after the football game against Dartmouth, approximately 4 30. So, final thoughts on all the stuff ramping up now. Yeah, you know, we, we, we've kind of, you know, I, I would say as the head coach of this basketball program, we've raised the bar. We've challenged this basketball team. You know, we, again, like I said, we were the three seed last year. I, I think we forget in a shortened season. And we were a game and a half really out of first place with UMBC and Vermont. So we were kind of knocking on the door a little bit. And then we had the chance to host you know, that home pod, and we did not get it done against UMass Lowell in that game. We're an older basketball team. I, I, you know, when you look at our returning players, look at our stats, we have our top five, six, seven scorers back. Um, I think we have all the pieces. Uh, 
the things that we need to compete for a championship. I think what's got to happen now is I think it's, you know, players have to take a jump in their games. They got to take the next step. We have been hammering uh, the defensive end of the floor in practice. We have been hammering our rebounding every day in practice. Uh, I, I just, I like how our guys are practicing. I really do. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased right now. And we've got great competition going on with this basketball team uh, top to bottom. So it's right around the corner. I can't believe that the, the time's flying by. The first game's going to be here before we know it. You know, please come on out Tuesday, November 9th, or stop by this Saturday. I mean, we'd love to see you, uh, you know, and then obviously when we play our first home game, Tuesday, November 9th, come on over and watch us play. The, I, I'm more for the kids, not, not, more for the players. I think more for their mental well-being of, wow, we're back to playing in front of fans. This feels good. This is motivating. We play up a level. I think all that stuff is really important.